Hello and welcome to Neighborhood Nature. My name is Lisa and I'm a librarian at St. Albert Public Library and my co-host today is Hannah who is a U of A student in animal biology. Today we will be looking at young birds, garden bugs and more. Here we have a raven. A raven is part of the Corvidae family which also includes magpies, crows and jays. And we always have large blackbirds in Alberta but the kind of bird depends on what time of year it is. So usually in the winter, there'll be ravens, and then in the summer, there'll be crows, because in the winter, the crows go farther, farther south, and the ravens do too, because they live up north. Except sometimes you can also see ravens in the summer too, because some of them stay here and they breed. So here we have a young raven, and it's just kind of hanging out on a roof, and you can see that there's magpies around it. They don't really like ravens very much. Here we have a group of young magpies, when magpies are together, they are called a mischief of magpies. So lots of birds have, when they're together, they have a name for that group, like a murder of crows or a parliament of owls. So not usually used that much, but kind of fun to know that. When young birds first leave the nest, they often hang out in a large group before finally dispersing off on their own. So this is probably what's going on here. But you can also see this behavior with lots of other kinds of birds as well. This is a young pileated woodpecker, and if you look closely, you'll see a second one. And it's quite big, it's about the size of a crow. We saw these woodpeckers in a wooded area, and that's typically where you're going to find them. Woodpeckers generally make a laughing noise, but these two are actually making a rasping noise, and we're not really sure why. Now, there was a lot of background noise when we were recording this, but if you listen very closely, you might be able to hear the rasping noise. Here we have a group of young gulls, and you'll typically see gulls where there has been food dropped by humans. And gulls are really hard to identify when they're young, so this is a young one right here. But we're not exactly sure what type it is. We think it might be a ring-billed gull, but there's several gulls that kind of look like this, so we're just going to call it a gull for now. If you feel up to a challenge, then you can definitely try your hand at gull identification. Another bird that is breeding right now is the barn swallow. And as you can see here, they make their nest in man-made areas. And you can find them around Big Lake. If you watched one of our previous episodes about two or three weeks ago, we had featured swallows and barn swallows and tree swallows. And this is a young tree swallow, which is another bird that you might see as well. And now for some news from the creek. We were down at the creek and we saw this nuthatch. They're one of my favorite birds. It seems to be very interested in this crack in the wood, and that could be because it's trying to jam a sunflower seed or two in there. Nut hatches sometimes do that to store their food for later on, or there could also be food in there that's trying to get out. You'll notice that it's hanging sideways on the wood, and that's part of the reason I love nut hatches. They're like the gymnasts of the bird world. They can hang upside down, they can go down trees head first. They're pretty cool. Now, one of the reasons they can do all this is because they have very long curved claws on their feet. And you can see this when he stops moving for a second. He also seems interested in a seed that's stuck in the crack here. Oh, and he got it. We also saw this scruffy little chickadee at the bird feeding spot at the creek. You can see that its tail feathers don't quite line up. The ones on the left side are quite a bit shorter, and this is probably because they're still growing in. We saw lots of bugs in our garden this week. And what do you think this one is? It's very fuzzy. And we can see that it's got very large eyes that kind of touch in the middle. It's got tiny little hair-like antennae. So it must be a bee fly. There are different kinds of bee flies and this one has a reddish color to it. And they're great for pollinating your garden. Another thing you might see in your garden are wasps. And we talked about wasps before mainly the parasitic ones which have a very long stinger-like structure, but they don't actually sting. This one here is a potter wasp, which can sting, but it's not aggressive like yellow jacket wasps are. Some wasps can be quite large. This is a mud dauber wasp, and it's just over an inch in length. Specifically, this is a black and yellow mud dauber, and the photo is very blurry because all I had was my iPhone camera, and I didn't want to get very close to this one because they can sting. Although they're not likely to unless you pick them up and squeeze them in some way. We also saw a honeybee in our garden, which is great because the bee population is not doing so well, so we're happy to see it. 
We also found this scarlet malachite beetle, and we did look it up. We found out that the adults are carnivorous. We don't know about the larva, though. And apparently it eats wheat, but as we're not growing wheat, we are okay with it being in our garden. It resembles a scarlet lily beetle, but it is not the same thing. We found this beetle, but we don't know what it is, but it's beautiful. It looks like it's copper or brass on its back. So if anyone knows what it is, please feel free to leave a comment, because we would love to know. While we're on the subject of things that we can't identify, we found this pink mushroom. So if anybody knows what it is, please leave a comment and let us know. You may have seen a lot of mushrooms lately because there's been a lot of rain. So keep an eye out. Thank you for watching Neighborhood Nature and we will see you next week.